Hello, beautiful beings. This is Maruma Tu, and you are watching Sun Soul Astrology. And this is a daily planetary translation for July the 28th. 2017 and today we still have the sun combusting mars they are in a one degree orb of each other the sun is at six degrees of leo and mars is at five degrees i am going to be reading the chart from the perspective of 3 p.m pacific standard time that is going to be 2200 universal time and the reason that I'm looking at it from here is because the sun will have just hit that six degrees and zero seconds of Leo and the moon will be conjunct exact at Jupiter and Libra at 16 degrees. Now before we get into the astrology real quick, I did want to let you know I have created a new playlist called Education and I'm going to be just doing some videos with the basics at this particular moment. I just put one up tonight that is about how to create your natal birth chart free online. So I walk you through the process. You can create it. You can use it in the same way that I do. That's how I'm showing it from my own perspective of how I draw charts. So go ahead and check it out. You can learn and see Maybe you've missed a step or you're just starting out, so it's fantastic. And also, sunsoulastrology.com is the way to book any readings with me if you would like to. I do have the new and temporary reading, 30 minutes for $50, which looks at this new moon that just happened on the 23rd in Leo, as well as the coming solar eclipse, August 21st in Leo. And I compare these to your natal and your progress chart. We really look and see where it's happening and how it's going to affect you. So much is occurring at the same moment that this is important. So definitely take a look, sunsoulastrology.com. It is listed in the show more section of this video. So with the moon in Jupiter, it's a good time when it's in Libra. The moon loves going through Libra and loves being next to Jupiter. That's always fantastic. And a couple weeks ago, whenever Venus was in that exact trying to Jupiter and the moon conjuncted all in the same moment, it was fantastic. That was definitely the energy to truly take advantage of because now as the moon has come back around and hit the same point, Venus is no longer in a trine. But Saturn is in a very, um, or I'm sorry, Pluto is in a very strong one degree orb of square. And Neptune retrograde in Pisces is in a three degree, two, two and a, it's like two and a half, three degree orb of quincunx. So there's really this stress on the moon coming back around and conjuncting Jupiter because that moon, it rules our internal emotions. It is our intuitions and our nurturing aspect. So our nurturing aspect in this strong square to Pluto and the quincunx to Neptune can make us extra vulnerable in our interactions with our loved ones. And we're talking about relationships of all sorts today. We're talking about friendships, intimate partnerships, coworkers, and family, the whole conglomerate of the blanket term relationship, you and another. Now, Jupiter, the planet of expansion, it really does push out this energy and amplify. It's, it's like plugging into a bigger speaker that has a lot um, farther push of frequency. So it, you know, the moon plugs into Jupiter and Jupiter's just like through the universe, right? And everybody's like, whoa, that's like some intense vibrations. And because of the angle of frequency that's hitting Pluto retrograde in Capricorn, it's challenging our structure. It's challenging our old way of life. What is it that we can bring from our past and still actually ascend into the higher vibrations and into the new earth 
um, consciousness, right? But that's the thing is that this new moon that happened on the 23rd, the solar eclipse that's coming, the full moon in Aquarius that's hitting dead in the center at 15 degrees of Aquarius on August 7th at 11, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, it's there's going to be these three stages, right, of just these strippings and realignments. We're going to have to see things from a new perspective because at that entire same time is Mercury going retrograde and Uranus going retrograde. On top of it, we will still have Saturn, Pluto, Chiron, Neptune, all already in the retrograde position. So adding two more to that is quite an extreme statement that the universe is making that we are meeting destiny at a particular karmic point in which we have to 100% shift gears. And that's not always the easiest to do. So either by force or by will, the universe is putting us through a serious transformation and a complete initiation. So with Pluto interacting in a strong square to the moon and Jupiter, we are going to be stimulated, we are going to be triggered, and we are going to have to alchemize our situations. And this is going to be that look point where we see, okay, who's coming, who's staying, who's for me, who's not. And this is also such a strong vibration because it's not only Moon and Jupiter squaring Pluto that's creating this energy. It's also the opposition that Saturn retrograde in Sagittarius has had to Venus moving through Gemini. And both Saturn and Venus have been in a square to Chiron retrograde and Pisces. So we've discussed this, you know, we discussed that this is a reflection, like an echo from the past from around March into April, whenever Chiron and Venus were conjunct together in Pisces, squaring Saturn and Sagittarius. At that time, Saturn was at the galactic center. So Saturn was really receiving this download, like all of the new download codes, like we all pre-ordered a new life at that time because that was Jupiter retrograde. Now it's, it's time, right? It's time to go to GameStop and stand in line and wait for our copies of Destiny 2 coming out next month. Anyways, um, but that's where, what we're doing now. And it's, it's like there's a rush and this line is packed. It's so long. Everybody is just talking at high frequencies and it's, it's a lot, right? So fast forward in time, right? We put our pre-orders in then, we adjusted a lot. But now because this is a mutable T-square, right? So we need to change. This mutable T-square says you have to change. And we're meeting the same planets, but in a different way. So it was almost like Chiron and Venus were on one team and they were square to Saturn and it was two against one. But now we've all become independent. Saturn still by himself, Chiron hanging out by itself <laughs> and Venus, she's over there in Gemini. So we can actually kind of look at each other, but I don't know, what, what side of the team do I want to be on right now? Do I want to let go of all those past wounds? Do I want to step into this new future? But I still have attachments to the past. And we are learning how to let go of our attachments to the past as this grand fire trine has really been purifying and burning up these parts of ourselves that are okay to go ahead and be singed off. Like, make it extra crispy style so it could just be and like flick off that burnt crust, right? <laughs> We're really dusting off some burnt crust right about now. But because of all of the Uranus energy being pumped into the grand fire trine and activated with the square to sun and Mars while those two have been super combust. And then as I mentioned yesterday that during that new moon, there was an X-class solar flare that hit us so it's such a representation of not only the planets, you know, as above, so below, it's expressing through like 
the sun was really like Mars, get the fuck back, like, psh, you know, and blasted them. And for us here, with it being in such a strong square to Uranus, it's not as much strong anymore, but it was at that time is what I'm trying to say. And the universe just opened up, okay? So human evolution, human consciousness, evolution is happening now and we are receiving those dna upgrades right because as the sun and us as all of as we are traveling so much further on the photon belt this new radiation that are that is coming in from these solar flares are unlock codes okay so now we're like unlocking our expansion packs and we're getting like all of the like you know um limited edition style destiny <laughs> two I'm so excited a cuny yes so this is what i'm trying to say it's a lot of vibration uranus has been in a trying to mercury and yeah so one thing I do want to go back to because of these aspects to Jupiter and the moon, the reason that I was so, you know, expressing this square to Pluto is because the quincunx is happening with Neptune and in a light sextile is Jupiter and the moon to Saturn. So that is harmonious. So it is saying that whatever work that we do do, Right? Saturn is looking to solidify that in a long-term vibration. So the harmony and the wisdom, the discipline, the spiritual integrity met with the trusting and seeking your own inner voice is going to pay off tremendously because this isn't a time to be pushed over and steamrolled by people in your life because there is going to be a lot of expression of strength and anger and um this mars energy right mars is the ruler of aries and also co rules scorpio so on either side we're talking about some serious strength okay <laughs> so whenever strength gets displayed it can definitely be one of those situations where you're now coming into some aggravated opposing vibrations but we do have to also stand our ground at the same time. We have to know when to give in, but we also have to know when to not um, just be that pushover, that wet carpet, that doormat, whatever, however you say that terminology, because we've had to revamp all of our philosophies and our beliefs. What are we putting faith into and who are we putting our faith into? So right now, as everybody's masks get stripped off and their true colors come shining out because you really get to see who people are when they're put under extreme pressure. And it could be career pressure, um, you know, getting... This is what I want to mention in this. And sorry to break my train of thought, but a viewer, thank you so much for commenting, mentioned that on the new moon, crazy experience... Um, was served with an eviction notice and then proceeded to serve someone else as, as far as I understand, but the landlord was then murdered that same night after serving an eviction notice. <laughs> and that is crazy. That's exactly that Uranus with the square to sun and moon conjuncting Mars for that new moon in Leo. That's that shit that came in and then the solar flare and how I was talking about if you are already a shyster person, then all of these energies are going to only intensify the negativity and the lower dimensional being that you may be. And also on the flip side, um, raise up the consciousness that you already have and ascend it to a higher place, open up the compassion on a deeper level. But sometimes we are compassionate whenever we do not let um, people pull their shit on us any longer. There is boundaries, there is borders, and that's part of what cannot come with us in our ascension process is us, you know, bowing, right, to forces in our life that do not 
deserve our surrender or our you know relinquishing of our power right because we're reclaiming our thrones right now we're in motherfucking leo season and all of this is happening to squash that last part of you that was weak and just strengthen and like train to fight on the battlefield it's it's so much and we really do feel like this is that fight you know this this the courage of the soul is standing up and it's rushing out there and it's not holding back. But literally, you know, if we really are on that battlefield and we have to go fight for our lives, what are the what the fuck are you taking with you, right? Are you going to pack up all the bread and butter and freaking milk? Are you going to pack up the cow so that you can milk it on the battlefield? <laughs> you know, so these are the kinds of weird shit that we're facing at this moment. And as I mentioned, it's by will or by force, but the strength is so strong that it is causing some resistance to be met with all of this because it, we weren't quite ready for such a massive upheaval on so many different levels. <sighs> yeah, it is, you know, the firm ground, it, it's, it wasn't actually firm. Whenever you built those foundations, they were, it was really quicksand that was tightly packed at the moment and now it's just kind of sinking in and, and kind of crumbling apart so there is a lot of positive energy that if you've really tapped in and you've stayed focused and you're just really not taking anything personally at this particular time because as we've discussed mercury is in virgo it's a very analytical critical detail oriented anal retentive type of sign that wants everything to be absolutely perfect and that's the job of virgo it's the most beautiful blessing it strives for perfection and it believes in it so you will achieve it if you continue to practice it it's just that critical um process can be tough on others right and it can also be tough whenever you know any other sign any other person is criticizing a virgo because they've already done it for themselves a million times over so if you do know any in your life just you know relax because there's nothing you can actually point out to them that they have not just blatantly obviously already gathered on their own and they don't need anybody to show them but like I said yesterday, we all make the choice. We make the choice to move forward and connect to a higher energy that exists outside of us and within us, within, without, because it's all the same. Or we go ahead and we just ignore the fact that um, <laughs> there is something else here with us and we're here for a reason. So to each their own, right? Right now, we need to focus on ourselves our immediate present moment we need to focus on just relaxing into this warp speed journey through the universe and hold on tight you know just if you see that you have given your power away and or you get this flashlight insight that you know what this is not any longer aligned with me and where i'm headed go ahead like really feel comfortable that this is that time and it is okay to go ahead and let go release transition transform and accept some new blessings and goodies to come so let's get into the degree for leo six degrees a hamster running in a treadmill keeping up with things can be an all-consuming matter because everything changes all the time there are always fresh angles to master and when you are coming from a very old place, it is not so easy to shake yourself loose and become the next thing asked. To do it, you may have to turn yourself into a super high-powered accomplisher, converting ancient ways to radically different eras. You are personally and privately one way and publicly and personally another way, turning it on to suit the occasion. The karmic performer in overdrive, hustling to catch up, at times compelled to rely on tricks. Fantastic to, co to cover all bases, to be everywhere. Pushing yourself to learn how to operate within the contemporary world that is alien at a loss. 
yet also gifted, bringing with you from the heart of nature such jewels and wonders that the world may ask, why do you cast your pearls before swine? Question mark. But there are moments in the journey when doing whatever is called for becomes its own reward. Even if the place is grinding and the recognition spars, something bright abides and sustains you beautifully. What a great degree to reflect everything going on. Cause you know, Chiron, Chiron is the, the hamster wheel, that repetitive freaking door that we keep on walking through, doing the same thing over and over and expecting the same result. The hamsters jump on the wheel expecting to go somewhere and they just keep running around in a circle. And with Chiron making all of these aspects, no wonder, right? <laughs> Keeping up with things can be an all-consuming matter because everything changes all the time. So true, this is where we're at, where everything is changing and this is the time. And absolutely, it is really hard to keep up with right now. It is all consuming. It is somewhat of an overwhelming energy, blowing gaskets like. <laughs> it's intense. There are always fresh angles to master. This is this is what we are doing right now. This new, this, this letting go, this transitioning and accepting the fresh angles, these are here for us to master now. That is an exciting place to look at this transition through. And when you are coming from a very old place, it is not so easy to shake yourself loose and become the next thing asked. Legitimately. So legit, that's what, that's what the resistance that people are experiencing is all about. Because when, you, when you're coming from this very old place, you're trying to shake loose this 3D matter material stuff. And that's what, it's like, we need stuff to survive, right? We need a house, we need a car, we need food, we need clothing. It's, it's like we need shit, right? And to lift up in this energy body, we need to lighten our load and or see an alternative to these super foundational things. But that's why it's so hard to shake yourself loose because we don't understand all of those things that I just listed as non-essential to survival. <laughs> So it, it makes us so scared. It question. It makes us question everything in our complete and total reality. But we're being asked to be the next thing and do the next thing to become it. To do it, you may have to turn yourself into a super high-powered accomplisher, converting ancient ways to radically different eras. I've been mentioning this about Uranus retrograde. Uranus retrograde carries the codes from those ancient eras and is in the present moment knowing how to bring this new evolution of consciousness to humanity and do something so different, that super high powered accomplisher. That's what this new moon and solar eclipse is aiming to do make happen and we are going to do this we we don't really have a choice right now you are personally privately you are personally privately one way and publicly in personally another way turning it on to suit the occasion we do this and it's not in any way shape or form a negative thing privacy is re is reserved for privacy public is public okay so what we do in private obviously we don't usually bring it to um the corner of the block or the grocery store but to turn it on and off for the occasion we do need to hone in on these skills because you know whenever psychic vampires walk up into your space no it's it's those they don't get the you know promo code free for heart sparkles like right <laughs> 
I mean, you can, but they're just gonna sit there and they're going to use a million of those free promo codes and then they're gonna tell all of their you know, energy vampire friends and nobody's gonna pay for shit. And now our Heart Sparkle app or Craigslist offering is totally gone to shit and our value has as well because now we haven't claimed um, that we see our Heart Sparkles as having worth and value, that they are a consumable just like food and should be just as essential for our survival as the nutrition of our food is. So these are the alternative shits that are going to come up and show themselves. So yes, it's a karmic time, karmic time. So this turning it on and off for occasions is going to be based pretty much off that. Like you're gonna get what you're giving, you're going to get what you have been owed, good or bad. The karmic performer in overdrive, hustling to catch up. <laughs> right? A lot of people are hustling to catch up. A lot of people have been on some fuckery for a really long time and they're coming into this awareness and they're like, shit, like I gotta right some fucking wrongs. So <laughs> do that hustle. <laughs> At times compelled to rely on tricks. Let's not go into this because as I was mentioning, these are those sensitive moments that are going to be trigger buttons for us as the moon and Jupiter conjunct in square Pluto and quincunx Neptune retrograde because these tricks, right, whenever we rely, compelled to rely on them, the Neptune energy is going to give us this air of illusion that we can get away with it <laughs> and that other people won't see it happen. But Neptune is retrograde, so everybody is exposing shams right now. So if you are compelled to play tricks on other people, no matter how much trust you've already built up with them, that's the cautionary point because there is no, no, no fuckery. They're like literally like mind yourself right now because that's what all of this is saying is do not, do not um, knowingly manipulate or contrive or um, try to bend anyone to your will. This is a perfect time to live and let live, right? It's, it's pretty important. That's why I'm like tripping. Frantic to cover all bases, to be everywhere. Wouldn't we love to have some clones in order to cover all of our bases and be everywhere? But we can't. We can't. Pushing yourself to learn how to operate within a contemporary world that is aliened at a loss. Star seeds, y'all know what this is all about because 100% we don't feel like we're from here. This world, it, it seems like a loss. Many times throughout our life, no matter who you are, there's always a point in everyone's existence when they hit rock motherfucking bottom and they don't want to get back up. So we have to push ourselves to learn how to operate within this contemporary world and still be proud to be a motherfucking alien. So we're claiming our alien throne, our lineage, we're claiming our alien DNA and we're, we're speaking it proudly, like no more. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I live on earth, but I'm not originally from this hood, you know? It's like I was born in California, I walked in in Seattle, but here I am in Vegas. Like what is it that I claim, right? What part of the galaxy is that? So we're all stepping up. Yet also gifted, bringing with you from the heart of nature such jewels and wonders that the world may ask, why do you cast pearls before swine? Question mark. This is why the ancient initiated schools of wisdom were so secretive. Because you cannot cast pearls of wisdom and knowledge in front of swine so do not turn around to pick up you know the spiritually um void of course people <laughs> you really have to focus on your own ascension right now people if their frequencies aren't tuned they're never going to hear the words that are coming out of your mouth and it's just best to not damage yourself or 
put yourself in a situation where you're questioning the, the value of what you have to say. We already know that the mainstream population doesn't give two fucks about anything that's coming out of my mouth right now, right? But I am blessed to have you all with me. And that's, that's true success and true soul fulfillment is I, I get to connect with my soul tribe every day and you get to connect with me. This is the best thing ever. I'm not thrown out into like a TV recording studio where I'm broadcasting out to everyone who's like, oh, look at her, look at her like crazy hair and her dress. Like who the fuck does she think she is? Like that bitch can't even read. She's all making up fucking shit. Like she's stupid, you know? Like it can go a hundred different ways whenever you put yourself into that mainstream category. But that's part of it, right? That is so part of it because the mainstream has been dumbed down to be those swine. And I'm not casting my jewels out there. None of us should be. Our pearls are to cast amongst us, you know, like those heart sparkles. We're the ones that would see the value in such a beautiful energy um, that does nourish the soul. That's why we go for healing. And that's why we go, you know, to, to do tarot cards or astrology or any any of the modalities, right? Um, psychic readings, the whole nine yards, because we appreciate it. But there are moments in the journey when doing whatever is called for becomes its own reward. When if the pace is grinding and the recognition sparse. This is everything that I was just expressing with my gratitude and joy for connecting and in the way that I do it, because the journey, right? And th there may very well be a time that the ones that are leading the movement right now in the light worker spiritual communities does get called to go to the mainstream stage and they are going to have to basically grind and not expect a serious amount of recognition to come back to them, to expect the scrutiny, but if we meet destiny at that point, like legitimately, that will be a reward for the journey at the moment. And it's a moment by moment thing. As this degree keeps on talking about the first sentence, keeping up with things can be all, all consuming matter because everything changes all the time. So in one situation, it's best to reserve your knowledge and not exert it on the wrong ears. And then at another flashbang moment, you're thrown in front of millions to share the message. So go with that flow and grind, hit your pace with it. Something bright abides and sustains you beautifully. That's the underlying and key message every single day, 365 days a year, that yes, something bright abides and sustains us beautifully, heart sparkles. So go ahead and spread them around, share them with everybody, and definitely take a look in the show more section below, <coughs> cue me, below this video, and check out sunsoulastrology.com as I am doing a new and temporary reading for the solar eclipse happening August 21st. I look at the new moon that just happened on the 23rd of this month, Compare it to that chart with your natal and your progressed. And so, yeah, we meet 30 minutes, $50. It's there. You can book it with me. And we'll link up and talk about it, all right? So I will see you tomorrow. I love you so much. Job left. To me. Absorb my life. Let me illuminate you. Close your eyes. Can you hear my voice?